The paddock here on a small holding north of Johannesburg. It's hard to believe that Dr. Cecile Jardine is a chronic infections expert with patients who fly in from around the world. She follows in the footsteps of her father, Professor Jardine, who spent his life in the Congo and Belgium as a clinician specializing in tropical diseases. I treat from uh, the patient called a horrible name like CFS, ME epiflu. That's the start of a disease that normally will go to autoimmune condition, any type of chronic infection. Claire Berman, Dr. Jardine's patient, was a healthy child, but at the age of 14, she developed debilitating symptoms. I really started having intense headaches every day and muscle aches, and after a while, I wasn't sleeping anymore. I was extremely tired all of the time. Her father, Leslie, a diagnostic radiologist, was baffled by his daughter's condition. Nobody could really ever put a definite finger on what she had. We've done all the tests, all the blood, CTs, MRIs. I've seen so many doctors from GPs to pulmonologists, dietitians, rheumatologists, neurologists. Judy de Camara was also desperate to figure out what was wrong with her little girl Tatiana. Just before she turned two years old, she um, started waking up in the mornings and sort of dragging her feet. I never thought anything of it. And then one day she just told me that she couldn't walk. Her knee joints were swollen and her left hand contorted. We had to carry her, uh, push her in a pram. It was tough. She, she missed so much school and she couldn't do stuff that other kids could do. And what was going through your mind? What did you think it was? Um, we just really went to a lot of doctors, did a lot of tests. Um, they said it was juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so she started off with um, going to rheumatologists. Uh, where she drank her cortisone and methotrexate, um, which really just made her very swollen, moody, um, hair growing in her face, took away the pain, but never really helped. Okay. Tatiana remembers it all too well. Are you taking a lot of medicine? Yes. The medicine didn't work. Claire was in a similar predicament. The situation got so bad that at one stage the rheumatologist put her into hospital and treated her with intramuscular injections. Uh, the one afternoon she had uh, between 70 and 90 injections into her muscles. I'm so sore and I can't study and then things get even worse because I'm not studying and then it's just a whole big vicious cycle of how am I ever going to get through this? How am I ever going to accomplish anything in my life if I can't actually do anything? My greatest point of despair was when one day she said to me, Dad, I'm in so much pain, I'm in so much agony. Um, if this is what life is all about, then I really don't want to live anymore. I mean, I don't know if I can. I just refuse to believe that she would live with it forever because that's what everyone told us. Many of us are tired a lot of the time, but chronic fatigue syndrome is severe, debilitating, and can even be fatal. For these families, it was a case of going from doctor to doctor until they finally arrived at the door of Dr. Cecile Jardine. Leslie's wife was given the book entitled A Disease Called Fatigue. I was very skeptical, but I was at my wit's end. So my wife read the book and gave it to me, and I read the book. And to my great astonishment, I could see Claire jumping out of the pages of this book. What sets Dr. Jardine's approach apart from those of her peers is that she performs extensive blood tests looking for germs and for signs of damage caused by those germs. All over the world, diseases such as bulharzia, mycobacteria and rickettsia are transmitted from animals to people by parasites. The common denominator of those patients are fatigued. They're all fatigued. And then, added to that, you have very often neurological or rheumatological symptoms. These germs are far more common than most doctors recognize, so they're seldom looked for in chronic fatigue syndrome, rheumatic and autoimmune diseases. One germ will not make some people sick. You need a combination of germs. One is not enough to shake an immune system. What she has found is that for the infection to progress to a chronic stage, several germs need to be present. If a person is bitten and the germs transmitted, flu-like symptoms result. If the germs overwhelm the immune system, the disease advances into a chronic condition. And if this persists, it may lead to an autoimmune disease. Those germs are intracellular. So they're quite smart germs. They manage to hide in the cell. And because of their position, you have to use two antibiotic combinators. 
a bacteriostatic and a bactericidal. In other words, an opener and a killer. However, her unconventional approach has made her no stranger to controversy and her methods have been questioned. When pressed, her detractors refused to come on camera to make any comment. But the tests speak for themselves. Both Claire and Tatiana were diagnosed with multiple infections, which included rickettsia. It was very exciting, finally, to have an answer that there might actually be something that could potentially help me. Dr. Jardine treats the infections by prescribing carefully selected combinations of the best and most effective antibiotics available, which she alternates over time to avoid the development of resistance. Seven days out of every month, she'll receive antibiotics. Um, and then to support the antibiotics, there are natural microorganisms which uh, need to be supplemented to prevent the um, antibiotics destroying the good um, microorganisms that there are in the body. Using the correct combination of antibiotics is key to treating this condition. The problem is the doctors are treating the symptoms rather than the causes by prescribing cortisone and chemotherapy agents rather than a combination of antibiotics. Sadly, many people die of the disease today or end up in ICU due to misdiagnosis. Cecile has vowed to train doctors about her treatment protocols. And I would do a little session with 10, 20 doctors, you know, once a month, twice, or every second month, something like that. That would change a lot. And it just kind of gets... The stage She's given Claire and Tatiana hope for the future. I feel better. I can run and I can lie down. I can also move my, my hand properly and my hand is better. I feel like there's a potential chance that I could, in fact, get my life back and lead a normal, meaningful...